sort of dovetails a little bit with with that that chait uh yeah. Lefitz, i don't want to call it a debate but it's it's out there where jonathan chait had written a piece um basically saying that the left was problematic that that <laughs> is not a new theme of his um probably one that he's been writing about I don't know when the first time I ever interviewed you, but it, it was probably a decade, at least a decade yes, ago. Yeah. And it was, uh, Chait was w- well into that theme yes. for, for many years. Um, but the twist is, is that he was promoting the democracy movement, which right. is the first time I've ever heard of that movement. <laughs> right. Uh, which it's is, and there's a new organization, I think that started... Uh, where Bill Crystal is signed on and Benjamin Wittes and yeah, like, and they're like the Pritzkers are behind. Yes, it. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. and huge uh, Democratic money, ostensibly to save our democracy right. from from Donald Trump. The, yeah. I- and that the idea is we uh, we got to be nonpartisan, yeah, and just focus on saving our democracy. Put our agendas aside mm. and focus on this. Uh, uh, um, on on this democracy movement. And uh, Eric Leffitz um, wrote, well, you know, the real danger to our democracy is uh, all of the, uh, the the way American capitalism, I think he puts it. Yes. Um, and which I think he would also define as, at this point, highly monopolistic, completely, um, uh, you know, uh, there's a disequilibrium. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, labor has no power. Um, I think you could also say, you know, capital has far too much power. Mm-hmm. Um, Two-tier justice system. Yes. Because of it. I mean, all the problems that we see with, with American capitalism today. Uh, he says that's a, a bigger threat to democracy. And the real problem with these norms movement mm. is that you got to vote for Chuck Schumer and Democrats to take over the Senate yeah. and then say, send us your nominees, um, you know, President Trump. We're not going to filibuster them. We're not. <laughs> we're going to give them hearings like you've got to do all the things that I think a lot of Democrats, even Democrats. Mm. You know, if you go to your average Democrat and say, hey, do you hope that if the Democrats take over the Senate that they're they gonna, restore norms? They like, was, <laughs> they, but even like restore norms, they're going to be like, well, uh, yeah, maybe. Sure, yeah. but, but if you say like. They're going to seat that first justice that comes through. <laughs> they're not going to do, they're not going to uh, do any payback for this stuff. I think I think yeah. now the Democrats would say that's insane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the one of the things about, I guess, asymmetrical partisan warfare um, is that, um, you know, I can easily foresee if the Democrats retake the Senate, them bringing back the, the, the blue chip uh the blue which, slip blue slip i mean the blue slip uh thing which is where if uh if you're if a home state uh senator of either party objects to a judicial nominee they get to put a hold on it um which is a you know long-standing tradition ron johnson did it for one guy who just got seated for seven eight years or yeah, something yeah. exactly yeah and uh and republicans have just finally after threatening to for a long time finally gotten rid of it yep and they did that because you know, they actually know what's at stake and they want to fill the judici- judiciary. And so when Senate Democrats retake power, like, are they going to bring that back? Like, if there's a Democratic president, will they be respecting that? Will they be respecting that norm again? Because if so, this is, I think, what Chait, what Chait always tries to posit the left as being anti-democratic. Um, but in this instance, um, the norm would be upholding an anti-democratic principle, which would be installing a judiciary that doesn't reflect the will of the people. Right. That uh, a sort of neo lochner judiciary consensus that would like hold back what the what people collectively want ha- to happen. Right. The result would be anti-democratic. Yes. A. Yeah. B. Also, I got to say, blue slips. That's not, not exactly democratic. a democratic no. institution, no. <laughs> right? The idea yeah. of letting one uh, one senator from any state any, yeah. to, to uh, inhibit the uh, federal judiciary, I don't really see the democratic aspects of that no, at exactly. all. Yeah. Are you guys having the same thought process now of Chuck Schumer explaining to the Baileys what the blue slip law <laughs> right, exactly. is, what the rule is, okay. and trying Let to run it by them? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, the, but the other thing that really struck me about Chait's thing, which I thought was the the... Uh, aside from 
the sort of like um, I think just the the wrong headedness of the argument was what made it really disingenuous to me was like, OK, if the premise is this is a democracy movement, then you should be writing this piece about Mark Warner Mm. and about Heidi Heitkamp and about uh, Joe Manchin mm. and all the Democrats who have been complicit mm -hmm. in allowing Donald Trump to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just, if you if you don't want to make it about partisanship, fine. But why are you, why are you seating, why are you seating any, why are you voting for, confirm any of these justices? Why yeah. are you even, why are you even showing up? Aziz Rana would not have voted for any of those nominees. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. but yeah. why are you even showing up at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, well, Chait is always fighting. Chait is is <laughs> fighting a battle for what the Democratic Party will look like in the future, and he he wants to he wants to keep people to his left out of it. So, like, that's the subtext of all of these things he writes. Um, it's it's about delegitimizing the left, the sort of left wing argument. Um, and I mean, what I find very absurd about it is he's calling writers like Jed Purdy anti anti democratic, small d anti democratic, um, when like. Someone like that's actual agenda is the expansion of small d democracy everywhere. Right. And like, uh, I think um, people sort of in that cohort, like who are social democrats or democratic socialists, believe that a much more democratic country would be look much more the way they would like it to than our current system. Um, and I think so. I think it's unfair of Ch to sort of take what is a political argument and and then accuse. Uh, people to his left of being undemocratic or anti-democratic. Right, and the interesting thing is that I think there are Democrats to his right who, yeah. if they just uh, parsed out this notion of, wait, wait, you want Chuck Schumer to get in there and and okay all of uh, Donald mm -hmm. Trump's, I mean, yeah. you, you just need to be a partisan Democrat. Yeah, yeah, Never yeah. mind where you, you are on be, the yeah, ideological be, spectrum yeah, exactly, to think yeah. that his, his argument is ridiculous, yeah. right? I mean, are there really a lot of Democrats out there who are happy with Mark Warner? No, I, I don't well, think so. Because so. someone like Mark Warner, his calculation is always just that he can get away with it. Not that what yeah. he's doing is... Like with the, the bank deregulation stuff, there's no constituency for bank deregulation in the Democratic Party. And there's barely a constituency in the Republican Party. Right. He just he just knows, I can get away with this. Like, and it won't... Like, there's just not enough of a um, uh, media infrastructure in place to punish me for it. And the populists don't have enough power to punish me for it. So, you know, I'll I'll get... Reelected, probably. That's right. a very Maoist style of argument. Mi mission, ac <laughs> mission <laughs> that accomplished. The next piece, right there. Um, it, it, now, let me just lastly, let me ask you this, because um, it is the case that you and I have been talking about this for uh, a long time. Uh, I mean, particularly Jonathan Chait, like yeah. beating up on the left, and it's yeah. funny because, like, now he's had like this is it, it is uh, it, it's an awkward time for him. Yeah. Because like I think like he really had to shoehorn that in. Yeah. And other times it's been easier. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. You're right. I mean, in yeah. other times it's been easier. Like you don't understand what's at stake in Iraq. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're being irresponsible and you're gonna cost us the election. Yeah. He doesn't have those things to go to anymore. Right. Uh but it also occurs to me that not only is it more awkward for him, uh, based upon the era, but also uh there's less there seems to be less resonance for that. I mean, yeah. dramatically less, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, speak to that just for a moment, because I'm surrounded by people who, you know, during the Bush years, for the most part, were either in junior high or, you know, <laughs> uh, or just high or... or <laughs> 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 I'm, not, I'm not naming any names. Water boat, uh, dude. Uh, um, straight edge. But but it really has been sort of extraordinary, hasn't it? Like where the where the center of yeah of uh, at the very least the Democratic Party has moved. That's um, what's really interesting is um, yeah the there's less of an appetite for that um, bashing the left style of argument. I think people are less convinced that of the of the idea that like we need to suppress the left in order to win with moderates. Like people are kind of fed up with that. Um, and you even a writer like Eric Levitz, I don't know him super well, but I think he I think he used to be much more sort of in the center of of the of the Democratic Party. And I I think the situation has moved him contextually to a point where he's arguing against American capitalism as as causing this pro these problems. Um, and Chait just sort of remains stubbornly where he is. Uh, but so when you look at, I mean, I, it's all been very well documented, but um, people like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker 
are trying to sound not like the people they were elected as originally. The right. people they were elected as originally were a straight shooting law and order prosecutor and a very business friendly uh, mayor who was with the help of finance. Like was gonna fix government. Big that's, charter school guy. Yep, yep. And that's not how they talk. Any, like regardless of what you want to say, their actual agenda is secretly or not. Like that's just not how they're sounding anymore. And they're jumping on big substantive left wing job proposals. guarantee pilots. Cory Booker is still the only uh, U.S. senator. Yeah. Who has a job guarantee yep. uh, proposal on the books? Yeah. 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 Still is the only one. No, it's, which, it, which is wild. Like and and I think like. It, I, I'm, I'm and, and I should be clear, it. I don't think that's who he is. Sure. But the idea that he has to project that, I think, is uh, very helpful. Yes. I, I. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, this is what, I mean, this is what we're he uh, here in New York, like this gubernatorial election. Like, this is what we're seeing here, too, where it's like uh, a, a man who was elected twice, twice. Uh, as governor on a uh, on the platform of I'll work with Republicans to get a middle of the road way of doing things and and uh, it, you know he's now he's he's like no one can match my record of progressive accomplishments right <laughs> like so uh, and I think you know uh, Chait would and maybe he's also black now yeah it's true Which yeah he's thing. he's, well, he's, he's an immigrant yeah, he's, he's, he's undocumented immigrant yep. yeah it teaches everything yeah, yeah, yeah. He, is, he is he is all things combined in one man. So and I uh, I think and there's a lot I think there's a lot of work to be done obviously but um, I think it's hard to say that um, it's it's really hard to say the 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 left is causing problems for the Democrats when the Democrats are are like jumping to co-opt it. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, I remember, I remember, but it's <laughs> uh, um, I I remember having you know uh, uh, just talking about how people were afraid to identify as liberal. Oh, yeah. Not because it would be out of fashion to the right, but because it was considered too toxic because you were saying you were of the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, liberal yeah. was not a word in the early aughts no. that anyone would identify. In fact, the word progressive what? was introduced to mean liberal. Mm -hmm. But mm, people were afraid of using liberal because basically since Dukakis. In I the think. early 2000s, the only time people would self-identify with liberals is when they were making a case for invading Iraq. Right. <laughs> like they would be as a liberal, like even right. I know right. we exactly. should, right. even I know we need to <laughs> topple Saddam Hussein. Right. But in any other circumstance, you would never self-identify. Never, never self-identify <laughs> in that way. I mean, you would run from that all the time. And yeah. I think that started, I mean, that started, and within... The course of 15 years, uh, people passed through that yeah. to like, oh, I'm not a liberal, but yeah. um, I mean, it's it's fascinating. But um, I, I don't know if anything can be done about Chuck Schumer, but I really <laughs> think it's a it's a huge, huge problem we and a get massive missed opportunity. Babies. Yeah, we. That's gotta basically. Yeah, we, it's gotta, it's gotta we can get a, to the we, maybe the yeah the Baileys have like a a, a Bernie bro son. The Listen, maybe that's have a, a kid <laughs> who starts reading the Jacobin. Here's the here's that's the thing. How it will work. If your yeah. name is Bailey and you live in Massapequa, you live in Massapequa, <laughs> you have a job. Please email us at majorityreporters at gmail dot com. We need to talk. We need to put together a video. You need to send a message to Chuck Schumer uh, that he needs to. I don't think it's Could just... Could you imagine that? I'd be like, Chuck, why are you condemning Israeli forces killing a Palestinian baby? I would never want to do it, but the Baileys insist you can't kill Palestinian babies anymore. There you go. <laughs> oh, that, and speaking What's of which, the gas tax in Israel? Well, that's what he said about... That's what he made that point about that he was blaming the, the crushing yes. of the... Oh, Iran that's right. Yeah, yeah. He was like, gas prices... His argument was gas prices are too high because Donald Trump threw out the Iran nuclear deal, yeah. which mm. Chuck mm. Schumer opposed the Iran nuclear deal. <laughs> he was a, like an ardent opponent of it. It's also Israel. awesome because there's like there's that's there's like thousands of reasons to support that. I wonder deal. if somebody he on his staff like the one. Like, I, well, I wonder you know, if there was someone on his staff that said, uh, Senator, you 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 didn't oppose. I mean, you oppose yeah. this deal, don't you? Aren't you worried about that? Eh, no one's going to pay attention. Yeah, to the right. Baileys <laughs> told me it was fine. I'm just putting it. it listen, okay. We're going to put it up on the website. Yeah, we'll put it And on if it comes back up again, we could say that I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Mm. It's fine. What is everybody so worried about? <laughs>
the democracy move what? <laughs> the, 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 don't I get credit for helping him ease through his agenda? <laughs>